Welcome to Cross Device Tracking, What an Affiliate Needs to Go. My name is Janine Crooks and I'll be your host today. I'm the Client Services Manager for AWIN US and I really appreciate your choosing to spend some time with us right now. We'll run through the session, but if you have any questions, please feel free to ask them along the way. While we will have time at the end, we want to make this as much of a chat as we do a discussion, so please feel free to just jump right in and ask questions. So let's get started. To begin with, what is cross-device tracking? The basics are that there's just a definition which says for affiliate marketing, cross-device tracking follows a user's purchase journey across multiple devices through completion. Since today's e-commerce is both multi-step and multi-device, in an industry focused on performance marketing, tracking must remain robust enough to follow this activity. Advertisers unable to track by user are not really tracking at all. According to Google, studies have shown that 90% of smartphone users have used their phone to make progress towards a long-term goal or multi-step process while out and about. So whether this is searching for information or choosing what item to buy, the fact is that a huge number of searches begin on smartphones. Using more than one device is called multi-screening. Basically, there's two different ways that this works. The first one is sequential usage. So that means that someone is moving from one device to another at different times within the same time period to accomplish a specific task, like uh, searching on their smartphone and then ultimately purchasing on their desktop. The other type of, of multi-screening is called simultaneous usage. And what that means uh, is that someone's uh, within one of two categories. Either they're multitasking, which means they're working with two devices on an unrelated activity, like playing a game while researching something or listening to something else online. That's the most common of the simultaneous usage opportunities. But the second one is complementary usage, so conducting a related activity, like searching on both your smartphone and your laptop to compare results on the same query. You know, like when you're searching for hotel or airline prices and you've got your desktop open and you got your phone in your hand while you're trying to find the best deal, that would be complementary usage. Cross-device tracking focuses on sequential usage. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. Sequential screening is the most common and is usually completed within a day. 90% of people use multiple screens sequentially to accomplish a task, and that includes shopping. Um, people will often switch devices for their final purchase because it's easier or more convenient. You know how tough it can be to shop on your phone sometimes, and so, you know, Consumers in general find the same issues. Sometimes it's that the screen is so tiny it's hard to try and put in your, your credit card number, or sometimes the boss just walks up and you don't want to get caught on it. So people will do many, many switches and change during the day from one device to another. 98% will move between multiple devices in that same day to accomplish the task. So that is huge a huge opportunity that we've got to make sure that we're tracking. And it all happened so very quick, it was vital that any solution that was involved in tracking this had to be very, very robust. And as you can see from these numbers, it really shows why it's important to be able to track across multiple devices. In the past, with affiliate marketing, here was the single device tracking problem that we faced. Somebody would begin their morning and they would go on their mobile device to perhaps goodshop.com. The cookie drops while they're going to check out Apple Vacations. But they didn't make their purchase then for one reason or another. Maybe they wanted to think about it. It was a complicated purchase. Maybe they didn't have time to complete it at that moment. Whatever it was, they weren't able to complete the purchase. So that night when they go home, they go straight to their desktop and make that buy. Challenge was there's no affiliate tracking on their desktop, so no one ever got credited with that sale, even though the affiliate that started them in the very first uh, time in the morning should have gotten credit for that purchase because that's the reason why the consumer did it. The result of this is that it makes the publisher look like they had a lower conversion rate than was accurate, and the advertiser credits the sale to a different channel than affiliate marketing. So think about this, for example, in the fashion industry. This is usually an industry where the young demographics start off with mobile first, 
almost invariably going through their smartphone or tablet and because those are just casual devices. So you see something out there that's really cute, you want to find it on your phone so you can remember what it is you want to buy. Cookies are dropping on devices which often aren't used on the purchase stage as a result. A lot of times these involve blogger-based sites. So if you think about how you research a product yourself on casual browsing devices, how many times is your cookie on the wrong device rather than where you made your final sale? So that's why in 2015, AWIN decided to implement cross-device tracking to properly follow these type of transactions and properly reward the correct affiliate. So this is how cross-device tracking works. For example, here, the consumer begins their shopping journey on a mobile device. Later that day, or later in the week, or later that month, they actually go to a different device and complete the purchase. Through cross-device tracking, we're able to make sure that we can follow that consumer from one device to another device till their final purchase process, ultimately meaning that the original affiliate receives commission for the sale. They're the ones who got it started. They're the ones who deserve the reward for having generated that sale. It all starts with a user database. Let me emphasize that there is no personally identifiable information in this database. It isn't just encrypted, it's hashed, which means that it can't ever be reversed or unencrypted. Everyone in the database is merely a user ID, so I might be 467291, and that's the only way that I'm known within the database. Our database then associates each user with their devices, whether it's a phone or a desktop, and from there we can follow the journey through our advertisers' websites. But the most important thing is that there's a very, very large user database because that's where we can call on everything to come back and get whatever information is needed to track that publisher. There's two types of implementation, deterministic and probabilistic. So let's take a look at the strengths and weaknesses of each. For deterministic, this means that it uses definitive user identification with no assumptive calculations. By building a profile for each user, including the multiple devices they use, both desktop and mobile. And remember, there is no personally identification included in the user's profile. The second method is probabilistic, which means that assumptions are based on tracking. There's no user identification, and they will use a variety of data sources on it. So the way that this might work is they might use the same device originating from the same IP address over a designated period of time, like the same iPhone coming from the same IP address, must mean the same user. It can incorporate a variety of data sources and is cross-platform comparable or compatible. But one of the challenges here is how do you really know that that's the right person when you're using probabilistic? If you've got 20 people all in the same coffee shop, basically all having the same IP address, how do you know who's who? That's one of the challenges with probabilistic. So when you look at them head to head, you can see what the strengths and weaknesses are. And this is the reason why AWIN has chosen to go with the deterministic method. By using the deterministic method, it means that we are certain that the right user is being tracked with 100% accuracy. Though some of the probabilistic methods are accurate, usually in the 25 to 75 percent range, and some may even go to 100 percent, it's much more difficult to verify the actual user. Since we are rewarding publishers based on results, we didn't want to risk asking merchants to pay for something that we couldn't absolutely confirm was a true sale that belonged to affiliate marketing. We didn't think it was just enough to say, oh, we think this is a sale. So even though the reach is smaller with deterministic than it would be with probabilistic, we're much more comfortable in saying this to our merchants to confirm that that's the right amount that's being tracked, that the sale really was generated by an AWIN publisher. No guessing involved. It's legitimately earned the commission. Makes them comfortable. Makes our publishers even happier. The other thing to keep in mind is kind of the locked versus unlocked scenario. Deterministic traffic is what companies like Facebook and Twitter and Google use. And it means that as a user, you're locked in all the time so they can follow you around all over on their site. 
It's called a walled garden or locked approach. Their knowledge is limited to your activity on that site only, but they can't see what else you do when you go to other places on the internet. The A1 model doesn't use the walled garden approach. We can track our user's journey across all of our advertisers, not just on their first click with the first advertiser, but all the places integrated with cross-device tracking until they finally complete a purchase. So we've chosen Unlocked. That's, how, that's what enables us to have the huge database that we've got. So what kind of insights has a couple years of cross-device tracking given us? It's really fascinating. For starters, it was amazing to watch which devices initiated clicks. The chart on the left shows the percentage of sales of cross-device versus non-cross-device activity. Blue means cross-device was involved, while orange shows sales when a single device was used. So the second column over is the one for desktop, and it remains the strongest overall source for the first click. But if, notice how many sales initiated on smart tables, smartphones and tablets and exceeding uh, their cross-device cross results. So when you look on columns two and on columns three, all of a sudden the blue goes way up compared to the orange. So all of those methodologies benefited from cross-device tracking. Additionally, as the charts on the right show, when smartphones send browsing traffic early in the day, conversions resulting from those searches frequently doesn't come till the afternoon or evening. So people browse in the morning and then they buy at night. You can see the desktop still remains the primary source. It's always going to be the biggest as of right now, or for the, at least for the next couple of years. But the growth in mobile is making a big difference on both the clicks and the ultimate sales. One thing that I found fascinating on here was the path to purchase. Here we can find follow some actual paths that users uh, that we followed used. So the first user got right down to business. They were planning a trip, so they went to airline sites and airport parking sites on their desktop before finally making a purchase. The only time that they used their mobile phone was to check out toys and games. The second user loved to shop. So you can see that they visited clothing sites, department store sites, entertainment sites, hotel sites, and even more before they finally completed a purchase. So they loved to shop and browse before they finally bought something. Luckily, we could track them all along the way to make sure that the original affiliate still got credit. The third person popped around all sorts of various men's clothing sites before they bought. So it was interesting to kind of see how many different places they, they checked out. And I think that part of what's on there is that they perhaps looked for where it was that they were going to be going to make sure that they had the right clothing picked out and which site had it. It's just kind of fun to see this, and we can track all of this on all of our transactions. So it's pretty fun to see. So now, what does cross-device tracking mean to affiliates? This is the big question, right? So let me share what happened in 2016 with AWIN tracking through cross-device. As a result of cross-device tracking, 630,422 transactions were shown involving more than one device. They were tracked by cross-device cross tracking. This meant an additional $63,962,577 was tracked through cross-device in revenue. That meant an additional $2,648,571.08 in commission was generated for our affiliates as a result of this technology. That's a lot of commission that would have gone unclaimed if cross-device tracking had not been put in place. That's why this is so huge for affiliates to know and understand and make sure that that's part of the programs that they work with. Cross-device tracking is critical or you could be losing out on an awful lot of money. Our tracking in 2016 involved 1,204 advertisers and 2,927 publishers who all generated a sale as a result of cross-device tracking. This is also very important because we've got such a wide variety of, of results if you're uh, depending on your affiliate type through cross-device tracking. So the column in orange is without cross-device tracking. The column in red is with cross-device tracking. And you can see how it's bumped almost every type of affiliate along the way. The big winner here is content publishers such as bloggers who increased from 19% to 26% a gain of over 33% thanks to cross-device tracking.
This growth in results shows the value of content publishers to advertisers when it comes to making sales happen. Content sites tend to play an early role in the sales funny, funnel, so this methodology, methodology ensured that they were properly compensated for their actions. It's important to pay your publishers for what it is that they do. Justifiably so, a lot of advertisers wondered if discount code sites or cashback sites added incremental sales or merely came in at the end just to claim a commission. Thanks to cross-device tracking, we showed consistently that while content sites moved up one place in the results, both cashback sites and discount code sites still remained in the top three sources of traffic and sales. Cashback did decrease as a result of cross-device tracking. It went from 27% down to 17%, or down over a third as a result. Discount code sites, though, climbed from 20% to a 30% share. Uh, or climbed 20% from a 30% share to a 26 from 26% share. Um, the reason that coupon sites probably benefited disproportionately is because they really have already taken a multi-device approach to the market. They've got mobile sites, they've got apps, they've got desktop sites, they've got newsletters. So they're already out there in so many different ways enabling it, uh, consumers to drop that cookie for that very first click. So they've already optimized themselves that way. But that doesn't mean the other types of publishers can't. Now one of the things that happens is the content sites frequently complain that all of their sales are stolen by coupon sites. Following the purchase path showed us that while many think that this may happen often, it's not as frequent as you may think. Many purchases really do begin on coupon and cashback sites, and the whole path is much more complex than we ever might have guessed. One of the things that I found most interesting was that the results for PPC affiliates increased from 2% to almost a 7% share with cross-device tracking. So that's showing us that a lot of people went through, you know, they clicked on the ad, they went to the merchant site, they thought about it, and came back later and probably went directly to the merchant site not through PPC again, because why click on an ad the second time? The affiliate was the one who was responsible for a tremendous number of sales, and now is starting to get more credit for that. So regardless of what type of site you are, you're basically going to benefit from cross-device tracking. You can see that just about everybody is up as a result. Finally, we can see the volume and delay in actual conversions when employing cross-device tracking. Traditionally, about 74% of sales occur within the first 24 hours following the initial click. However, with the addition of cross-device tracking, an additional 14% of sales were also tracked during that time period. So that shows you how many people switched devices and completed their purchase within that first 24-hour period, as we discussed earlier. Ultimately, sales through a full 30-day cookie grew by 50% when cross-device tracking was implemented. So you can see, regardless of the time frame, cross-device tracking picked up a lot more that was going on. This makes it pretty clear why Amazon has a one-day cookie for their program, doesn't it? So, implementation. What does an affiliate need to do? Here's the best news you're going to get all day. Nothing. You don't have to do anything for cross-device tracking to work for you. Cross-device tracking code is implemented on the merchant side. The affiliate doesn't have to do anything for that to kick in. You automatically benefit from it being in place. But there's still some best practices <coughs> excuse me, that you can implement. You want to make sure you're the first click. And since mobile has become such a huge part of the process, as a best practice, make sure that your site works easily on all mobile devices. That's the best thing you can do to take advantage of cross-device tracking. Other than that, do your best to ensure your first click. But even if you're not, remember that AWIN has soft click technology, which prevents large coupon or loyalty sites from overriding an existing AWIN cookie. That ensures that the right affiliate gets credit for their sales. So in conclusion, let's remember some of the most important points of the day. Dropping a single cookie on the first device no longer accurately tracks what's happening. The vast majority of consumers use multiple devices every day, especially mobile phones. So only tracking on one device misses a huge number of interactions. 
The number of sales involving multiple devices is significant and will only continue to grow. Shopping patterns have changed. Consumers often browse on their phone but then complete the purchase on a different device later because it's easier to buy from a tablet or desktop. And often when they're doing that, that path does not include returning to the original affiliate site to continue the purchase process. Cookie times matter. Just imagine all the sales that aren't tracked with the one-day cookie, such as the one that Amazon uses. So best practices for programs are 30-day cookies with a minimum of seven days to be able to capture the majority of the transactions. The one caveat here, though, is finance programs, which are often an in-session cookie or a single-day cookie. It's unique to that vertical. They have to do it for a variety of reasons and regulations and all sorts of other things. So don't hold it against them if they don't have a 30-day cookie. But for the other merchants, really do pay attention that they give you more time than just 24 hours. Most affiliates do benefit from cross-device tracking with content affiliates gaining the most. Purchases initiating with them often change devices and frequently take longer times to convert. But everybody ultimately benefits. So that's cross-device tracking for affiliates. Does anyone have any questions? I'll be glad to answer them right now. Please feel free to use the chat function to ask any questions, or I'm also going to unmute everybody so that if you want to just ask it, please feel free to do so. Okay, Paula from Texas is asking us, how much more do merchants sell because of cross-device tracking? That's a good question. Overall, we found that advertisers' programs increase anywhere from 44 to 26% when uh, cross-device tracking is implemented. So what's really great about that is that those were sales that were getting credited to another channel when we couldn't track them. And once we did that, then they could see that it was really cross-device tracking that was making such a difference. And it helped to bring additional value to the whole concept of affiliate marketing, which is, of course, vital to all of us. Okay, Jennifer from Denver has asked a question. I just want to make sure, does an affiliate need to do anything for this? You got it right, Jennifer. You don't need to do anything at all. It's very easy for this to occur and very natural for you. You don't have to worry about the tracking. You don't have to change a link. You don't have to only use deep links. Anything that is done working with a merchant that involves cross-device tracking, if they've got it implemented, you automatically benefit from it. There's nothing additional that's required on your behalf. But if you ever have any questions, please feel free to use our chat functionality to be able to, or our ticket functionality to ask any questions that you might have, or reach out to the manager of any program, anything like that that you want to do. One of the things that we pride ourselves on at AWIN is that we're always available to answer any questions we've got. Okay, let's see. Does anyone else have any other questions? I've shared my contact information here, so if anybody would like to reach out to me by phone, by email, I think I'm on just about everything other than smoke signals I'm not good at reading, please feel free to do so, and I'll be most happy to answer any questions you might have. If you think of some later on, please feel free to reach out, and um, I look forward to seeing you in future sessions. We'll have additional webinars coming up shortly, so please keep track of what else we've got coming up. And I also wanted to mention that this uh, session has been recorded and will be available on our YouTube channel shortly. So thank you so much, everyone, for joining us today, and I hope you have a wonderful day and week, and rock things online. Thanks. Bye-bye. <laughs>